Okay, this, this video is going to be um, taking range of motion measurements of hip abduction and hip adduction. Hip AB and adduction occur in the frontal plane. The normal end feel for both is firm. The normal value for hip abduction is 40 degrees and for hip adduction is 20 degrees. For this, the patient is going to be supine on the bed and I'm going to need to stand on a footstool right next to the patient in order to take this measurement. In order to line up my goniometer, I'm going to need to palpate the um, patient's ASISs. So I'm going to say that I'm going to point to my own, and I'm going to say to the patient, Suzanne, I'm going to point. I'm going to. Um, sorry, I'm going to touch these two hip bones that stick out um, in your hips. Is that okay? Yep. And I'm going to use my thenar eminences, fingers outstretched and away from the patient. I'm going to come in a little higher because it's always better to err on that side until I palpate the ASISs. And then I'm going to put my thumb on there once I really know that I'm in the right vicinity. And then I'm going to say, Suzanne, I want you to take your index finger on each hand and I want you to put them right on my thumb. So now I'm having the patient do a little bit of work for me because she's pointing out exactly where her ASISs are. So the fulcrum goes over the ASIS on the test leg. So if I put the, AS, the fulcrum over the left ASIS, then I'm testing the motion of the left hip. Um, Okay, so the fulcrum goes over the left ASIS, the stationary arm is going to go across to the contralateral ASIS, and the moving arm is going to line up with the anterior midline of the patella. So I want the patient to bring your toes up toward the ceiling, and I want you to keep your kneecap and your toes pointed up to the ceiling. In other words, we don't want the patient to externally rotate. And I want you to bring this left leg out to the side as far as you can. That's good. I'm going to bring it, bring it back in a little bit. So. Suzanne started to externally rotate, and I just brought her back in to where she was purely doing abduction and no external rotation. You need to palpate to make sure you're lined up with the patella. And you can take a little break there. So Suzanne has 20 degrees of um, hip abduction. And now we're going to do hip adduction. So what we might do, Suzanne, if you can, I'll point out your bones again in a minute. If you could just scooch toward me, you can always have your patient move along the bed. And then she can abduct the right hip out of the way so it doesn't impede her ability to move the left one. Um, I might not have you bend your knee over the edge only because I don't want you have there to be too much rotation in your pelvis. All right, so I'm going to palpate those two bones that stick out in your hip again. Would you put one finger on each of those? Good. All right, this time again, my uh, fulcrum is over the ASIS of the hip that I'm testing. The stationary arm goes to the contralateral ASIS. My instructions are I want you to keep your toes and your kneecap pointed straight up to the ceiling, and I want you to bring this left leg in toward the other one as far as you can go. Keep it down on the bed so we don't want her to be flexing too much. And then I just move my moving arm so it's lined up with the anterior midline of the patella. You can take a little break. And so Suzanne has 24 degrees of hip adduction on the left.